The Kremlin didn't swing elections in 2016. That is a paranoid conspiracy theory and always has been. Every investigation, the Mueller report, the UKICO report, the Durham report showed the opposite. If Russia meddled, it had no effect. Inconsequential, it is not an existential threat to our democracy. But the big lie is too useful to let go. Russian interference is now the go-to slur for anything or anyone who disagrees. Yes, you've heard right, that was Claire Daly. Here is the monthly daily for the month of June. And this time she speaks about, again, the hypocrisy of the European Union and all of the human rights abuses that are going on within the European Union. And, and she talks about Russiagate and how that one is also ruining the discussion inside the European Union. Actually, there were quite three good speeches of hers, hers on the 14th of June, but all three of them are missing. Uh, they are not in the, in the archive of the European uh, Union Parliament, but well, you know, the European Union screws up in a whole different range of uh, issues, so this one is probably one of the smaller screw-ups, but still, too bad. But here you go. Please enjoy Claire Daly for the month of June. Thanks, President. I voted for this report. Hungary is a rule of law basket case, but it's not the only one. We have Spain, where the UN Human Rights Committee has twice ruled that the treatment of the Catalan independence politicians by the Spanish state breaches their rights. In France, we have people's rights continuously and systematically violated under the guise of counter-terrorism, while protest is met with spectacular violence. Bulgaria is a catastrophe. Croatia kidnaps and tortures migrants knowingly and gets rewarded by the Commission with Schengen entry. Italy is rounding up and arresting humanitarian workers. The Greek government is spying on journalists. The Irish Taunishta is attacking the free press. Latvia is taking elderly people to take language tests or be expelled. And what's the Parliament's response to all of this? The usual cynical nonsense. Political groups blocking debates are only promoting them when they're a chance for you to have a go against your political rivals. But you reap what you sow in this stuff. If politics is prioritised over the rule of law, then the rule of law breaks down. It's time to cop on and realise the same rules have to apply to everyone. Grazie, Presidente. Trump and Brexit should have been a wake-up call for neoliberals. But rather than accept their own responsibility and make amends, they chose to pretend that they hadn't really lost. They found a foreign scapegoat, ramped up the blame game, and so the myth of Russian interference was born. Does Russia meddle? Of course it does. But the Kremlin didn't swing elections in 2016. That is a paranoid conspiracy theory and always has been. Every investigation, the Mueller report, the UKICO report, the Durham report showed the opposite. If Russia meddled, it had no effect. Inconsequential, it is not an existential threat to our democracy. But the big lie is too useful to let go. Russian interference is now the go-to slur for anything or anyone who disagrees. The anti-war movement, Kremlin stooges. Catalan independence, Putin puppets. Journalists, climate actions, trade unions, Russian agents. Every slander more cynical than the last. This is a sign of a deeply unhealthy political culture. We warned at the beginning that this would end in tears. Now we've NGOs in uproar over the foreign agents' law, the Polish government accusing the op opposition of Russian collusion. I stand by our minority report. This report is a travesty to an open society. Some of its provisions likely breach EU fundamental rights law. If introduced, it will be abused. We need to put a stop to this this madness now. Um, reading this report is really a little bit like hearing dinosaurs roar. Competitiveness, productivity, inputs, outputs, throughputs, profit, and above all, growth. All the sacred cows of the old and destructive economic model that everybody knows is utterly unsustainable. But we're still banging the drum for it. 
And the occasional nod towards sustainability just doesn't cut it because unfettered growth is fundamentally unsustainable. It's burning our planet. You can't window dress your way out of that. You can't window dress your way out of the savage exploitation of people in the global south to fuel our growth mania. You can't window dress your way out to the misery caused to workers all over the world, forced to be more competitive, more productive, work harder, work longer, work faster for less. If we look around at the economic paradigm that we've got to, the misery of workers everywhere, a devastated planet, and it promises imminent mass extinction. It has to stop. If there ever was a time for to be radical, it's now. But we're very much blowing our opportunity. I have to say the brass neck in this place really beats all sometimes. We're in here to mark EU Day to commemorate the victims of the global crime crisis, and well we should. It's absolutely right to remember that last year, 33 million people in Pakistan, one out of seven, of the population were forced to abandon their homes. They experienced record monsoons, now followed this April by record breaking heat of over 40 degrees Celsius. A terrifying horror inflicted on people who contribute less than 1% of global greenhouse gas emissions. These are the victims of the activities of the global north. But while we shed crocodile tears for them in here, the same people often are going to come in here and are organising to vote down the nature restoration law. Essential measures which we need to tackle and help and deal with the climate emergency in order to protect nature and protect the very victims that we're now uh, talking about. If there was a world day to commemorate hypocrisy, we'd certainly be starring in it. President, the weaponisation of human rights in Nicaragua, this small, poor country 10,000 kilometres away, is really very disgusting as far as I'm concerned. It's very true that the United Nations report on Nicaragua alleges serious human rights violations. The forced deportation of hundreds of people and the stripping of citizenship cannot be ignored. But what the UN wasn't looking at and what this discussion has left out is the part paid in the conflict by the anti-government forces and the international community. The international community is not a bystander, it's a participant. It has deliberately employed coercion, including sanctions, to intensify divisions in Nicaragua, including pulling society apart, preventing it from developing its own relations with strategic rivals. The issue here is not about what we should do, but what we shouldn't do. Coercive diplomacy makes things worse. We've got to remove the sanctions, stop stoking divisions, and allow peaceful resolution of disputes. Thank you, Shun President. Interesting to see French colleagues haven't lost their colonialism. So this is Lebanon, where the currency has suffered record depreciation, hyperinflation, where one child in five can no longer go to school, 40% of households cutting back on education spending, where public administration is regularly marked by strikes as desperate workers try to get their wages, a health system deteriorating, and what do we have to offer? Nothing but the same old story. No mention of lifting the sanctions to Syria to allow the refugees to go home and build a life there. No mention of anything but no reforms, no money. The same old IMF story. Well, we in Ireland know that story very well. And ordinary people never benefit from it. It's about time that we started to recognise the reality. Neoliberal economic interference and the role of Israel in this area must be tackled if the people of Lebanon are to be free. AI is being sold to us as the latest in a series of groundbreaking technological leaps. It'll make our lives easier. It'll make the world a better place. Well, don't believe the hype. Like so much before it, AI will be used for surveillance and control. It won't give us a four-day working week or longer summer holidays. It won't solve the climate crisis or redistribute wealth. It won't make public services better or policing more effective. It'll be just more of the same, but faster and probably much worse. That judicial systems around the world are exploring using AI in judicial 
decision making should scare the hell out of us. That Ukraine has been held up as a living lab, living lab for AI warfare is frightening. We should be approaching this subject cautiously, like every new technology. Instead, we're far too quick to follow industry. Governments across Europe are chomping at the bit to use facial recognition to hell with people's rights. The Irish government, you have MEPs who are in that coming in here saying they disagree with it, but they're moving legislation before a possible EU ban. The EPP should be ashamed of themselves for reneging on the hard hours of negotiation at committee. Thanks, President. Of course, I believe that the European Union must contribute to Ukraine's reconstruction, but I had to vote against this resolution because practically every single thing in it about Ukraine and European security is wrong. It trumpets the 2008 Bucharest decision that Ukraine will join NATO, a decision which was warned could lead to a war, which it has. It pushes to integrate Ukraine into the Euro-Atlantic community, the very circumstances which caused the civil war in 2014, because of course, while some Ukrainians want this, others don't. And this resolution just doubles down on all of this. And even if Ukraine won back all of its territory, this plan would leave the country permanent divide, permanently divided and unstable. It talks about securing peace by expanding NATO. Seriously, NATO, the instrument of US empire in the post-Cold War period, the arms industry's pimp, NATO which makes more, war more likely everywhere. The only viable peace in Europe is a different security setup in which the sovereignty, territorial integrity and security of all is guaranteed. Thanks, Chair. This was a very good report. It pointed out and was clear that Pegasus hacking and spyware is an attack on democracy and human rights. It's sensitive to the power imbalance between the surveillor and the surveilled. It denounces stockpiling of zero-day exploits. It doesn't spare EU member states. It calls out Ireland for playing host to the cyber arms trade. And it's unequivocal that Israel is the global hub for spy companies. But I had to abstain because it doesn't ban this spyware outright. The problem is bigger than spyware. There's a nexus between it, state, hack state hacking, disinformation and electoral interference. Israel leads the world in all the dark arts. The Foreign Interference Committee heard from experts recently that Israel is a global disinformation epicenter where the companies operate on the basis that as long as you don't meddle in Israel, the US or Russia, you can do what you like. And yet we call Israel our friend. Unless there's consequences, this will keep happening. We need to change the relationships between the EU and Israel. Uh, thank you, Sean President. Um, Bernard Field, an Irish citizen, was released from Iran in the last weeks, and that's very much to be welcomed. It was, of course, a product of diplomacy by Irish state services, but also by Iranian diplomats. And diplomacy by national member states is the way in which we deal with this. To listen to some colleagues, you would think they want to ape the American model, which is we don't pay for hostages, which means that people end up getting dead or their families go into debt secretly paying the hostages and taking out massive loans. Now, the real question here is why does this happen? And countries that we will not allow have normal relations with us resort to abnormal tactics in return. That doesn't make it right, but it does help to explain it. We have had the exclusion of Iran from many different situations. The consequences of the sanctions felt throughout Iranian society are deep and painful. If we want to treat countries with respect, we have to treat them as equals. And diplomacy is the only way to resolve matters.